It's time! The ATM apologise to me, episode number eight, with the one, the only, the compliant, the easygoing, the fluff and guff stuff, Mr. Rewrite a press release and never have an opinion, Mark Watson! Dear, oh dear, oh dear, Martin, that is... And the voice of the people... Let me crown myself that, Martin Devlin, on the platform. What are we talking about? We're talking about the Bledizzo tonight, and I'm excited about this, even though you're not. I'm excited, Martin. I'm I am not, excited. I am... I'm looking forward to a test on a Thursday night. I'm excited. Unlike you, I do not have tongue up black caps freckle. I am prepared to tear that house down like you are with Ian Foster. And we also need to discuss today, people, what is the role exactly of Sport New Zealand and High Performance Sport New Zealand? Are these two organisations, uh, which have a combined budget of over half a billion dollars, is their role to fund sport or is their purpose to ram down our throats the political correctness of our government in terms of societal and political policy. Apologise to me! Mark Watson joins us, and to start with, though, a Thursday night Bledisloe Cup test. Now, I've been bemoaning this the whole time, saying, you know, here is Silver Lake in New Zealand rugby with the world's greatest brand and global marketing opportunities and new revenue streams getting shunted to a Thursday night in Melbourne because nobody in that city gives a stuff about it. Whatever. Here I am on Thursday thinking, tonight I'm turning the tally on, there's a Bledisloe Cup test, and I'm into it. Yeah, look, I'm into it. I'm into it more for the intrigue. I'm just, I, I just don't know which way this is going to go. But I, I, I look, I still just run through this All Black team, Martin, and I'm just not convinced at all, even if we beat Australia. I mean, look, I, I was thinking about this the other day. Go back to 2015 and go back and have a look at that Rugby World Cup side. What do you have? Franks in the front no, no, row. No, we had we, no, had, no, we had a Ford pack where if you picked the best yeah. Fords in the world, we had seven of them I in know, our team, mate. But, but this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. So you had Franks in that front row. You had, you had Woodcock. You had, no, you had Dane Coles because Woodcock had retired at that stage. So this was version number two. The first version in, in obviously 2011 was Tony Woodcock, it was Kevy, and it was Owen Franks. Owen Franks, Dane Coles, Joe Moody. Your locks still were Brody and Sam. But they were at the, but they were at their best. Then you go McCall, Reed, you go Kaino. You yeah, run through the back mate. line of of um Dan Carter. You, you've got Ma- Manonu, you've got Conrad. Conrad Smith, you've got We had Nehimuna Scudder Nehimuna on one wing and, and, and you had Savir on the other, Ben Smith at fullback. Now, now I'm Bowden made to bench. believe I'm made to believe at the moment here that we've got Ethan de Groot, okay? We've got Samione Takiahau. And, and then we've got Lomax, who, in my opinion, still hasn't proved anything. We've still got the same two locks, okay, seven, eight years on, who are well past their best. Well, we've got a guy, playing, best, we've got a guy playing at seven who's not the best seven in the country at Sam Kane. We've got a guy who's missing tonight's test but normally plays at eight who's actually the best seven. We've got a guy, Scott Barrett, who's not the best six in the country, who's a lock, okay. Then you start running through this back line, and you tell me, when you get to that, David Harvey is a fullback come utility. You've got a Kira Awani, who is a wing trying to play Rico at centre. Yeah, uh, sorry, Rico Awani playing at centre. Then you go back, you've got your best fullback in the country playing on the wing. Tell me, tell me how this team is going to win a Rugby World Cup. Draw comparisons with this, this side. Draw comparisons with 215, 211 and go back to 1987. Okay, right, okay, we, no, 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 we don't win tests playing players out of position. Okay, no, no. And we've got so many players in this organisation, in this current team, playing out of position. This is not a good all-black team. This all-black team is not going to win us a Rugby World Cup. Oh, it might beat the Aussies tonight. It might not. It's not going to win on the end of the year tour. This okay, is so a much, dreadful so much, time so for much, all so black rugby. So much to wade through here, right? And I'll, look, I'll put the I'll, I'll I'll put the deep sea waders on here because I mean I'll I'll start in the surf at ankle level and I'll keep going. Watto, for a start, you are comparing something that you can't compare. Let us go back through any sport. Okay, you're looking at a Man United side at the moment, and I could name all the players in my team at the moment, and I could go back to two two ten. Uh, Before that, 1998, it could go back to the early 1990s. It's not the same side because the players aren't as good. They are there. No, they're not. They're not not as good, those players. Those players are not Roy Keane. They aren't Ryan Giggs. They aren't Yarp Stam. They aren't Rio Ferdinand. These players aren't those players. So you've got to make do with what you've got. You can't compare the All Black side at the moment to that 215 side because not only did we have legendary players in all those positions, we had guys who were the best in the world in their positions. Now, you've just run through this All Black side that runs out against the Bledisloe, for the Bledisloe 
Ryder Cup tonight. How many of those are world-class players that you would pick in a World 15? Maybe Adi Savia. But who are the rest, Mark? Who but, are they? Well, look, if that's not the case, then, then name me an all-black side that is going to be the best in the world out of all the players in the country at the moment. You tell me, and I'll laugh in your face, mate, because okay. we don't have this okay. playing style. So you, you, like all the other fans out there, are so cheap, you'll go, let's blame the coach, let's blame Ian Foster. Mate, I could bring Wayne Smith in. I could get Ted back. I could get Shag back. None of those guys are going to turn this particular 15 into a world betting side because the players aren't good enough I, yet. I disagree. And I think when it comes to the end of the year tour and Schmidt and our forwards coach, Jason Ryan, Jason Ryan have a greater influence and pick the squad they want to pick to go well, on the end they, of the mate? year tour. Who are well, they? You know who I'd start at centre right now? Oh, I think it's the best centre in the country by a mile. We'll start in the front row. Ale- Alex Nankerville. Start in the Alex front row. Alex Nankerville. start set it. Go, oh, because what? He's not on the cover of Women's Day, Martin. He's not on the... Oh, OK. Alex Nankerville. I mean, for God's sake, you're picking Caleb Rolfe at centre is what you're doing, mate. Tell me what's wrong with Alex Nankerville then. Tell me what's wrong with Alex Nankerville. He Nankeville. won't bust a tackle ever in his life against an opposition that actually fronts him up and tackle, and like the South Africans or the England or the French, And what Conrad Smith did? Well, you give me a, you give me somebody that stands next to him who's the tackle breaking guy. You tell me who are who are those guys in our team tonight? Who is actually going to bust a tackle? Well, you've got guys like Roger Tuivasa-Shek who have not been given opportunities. Look, well, you, he's obviously not up to it. If he was, they'd pick him, wouldn't they? Martin, I disagree. I mean, you, what have you watched him play for Auckland in the MPC? Are you telling me you're going to pluck that guy out now, put him in the All Black backline, and say, Roger, go? Do we even know where the second five is his best position at the moment, Mark? How do we know? What, David, Har- we- David Harvey? How many tests have we lost with David Harvey? Nakira won as our midfield combination this I'm not year, saying, Martin. I'm not saying, I, I actually agree with you. I'm not saying that those guys are the, the number one and two in their positions, but I'm just saying, pick me an all black team out of the current playing stock. I've been watching NPC, I've been looking at these guys going, I mean, half of this NPC looks as though it's actually club rugby is the standard. There are so many errors and bumbles and fumbles and things. You're telling me, who are those world class players? At the moment, mate, our playing stocks are as low as they okay. have ever been. I think they're squeezing a sponge here. Quinn Tupaya. Now, he's the guy now, is he? At second 5-8. Oh, he's the guy Alex Nankerville at centre. Oh, for God's sake. Akira really? Rico Wani on one wing. We don't, I'm gonna make, Caleb I don't Clark want to pick a mother or two midfield. Maybe Caleb, an all-black midfield. Ca- Caleb Clark on the other wing. Yeah, he's cement. Okay. Absolutely. Will Jordan at fullback. And who's and who's on the other Who's on the other wing? Caleb Clark. No, who's who's on the, who's on the right wing if Will Jordan's at fullback? Rico Wani. You put him back at the winger? He's the best winger in the world, Martin. Oh, my God, he's a genius. He's an absolute genius. You're not going to play a winger on the wing, are you? I am. Why would you do That's that? That's exactly my point, though, Martin. That is a, and Hoskins Satudu. When did we have the Super Rugby final? What, the 18th of June? Hoskins Satudu hasn't played for three months, and now he's going to come in and play at number eight tonight. He's going to come in and play at number eight tonight. On the guys that are running this team are absolute utter morons, well, mate. Okay, they're painting by numbers, and 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 the reason they're doing that is because this team has been so inconsistent that all they care about is winning this test match tonight. You're talking about a World Cup that is next year, mate. Forget next year. Why don't we just first start establishing a consistent side that performs every time they actually play? And that's what we haven't seen yet. You don't know what side turns up tonight. I don't know what side turns up tonight. Isn't that part of the mystery of it now, though? No. Isn't it? No. Oh, you just want an all-black side that wins by 40 that's points. What when they actually did, that's what historically we've when done, did, Martin. Mate, that's what historically we've all done. All you did was moan it was too bloody easy and we're winning by too I much. I never, ever complained and moaned were when we were too guys, easy. I tell you I what, I will punch you into that corner if I have to, Watto. Okay, in Melbourne tonight, how good is this Australian side? Does it really matter or is it all about how much, how well we play? Well, no, this Australian side, how you beat Australia is and where they're very good at historically getting us, they... We think we've got to run around them. You run straight through the yeah, Australian yeah, backs. Yeah. You run straight over the top of them. But look, you do go through. It's an interesting one. Bernard Foley at 10. Oh, please. I mean, come on, mate. Really? Is that Andrew what Andrew Callaway Australia? at fullback. Bernard Foley, you've got, to run, you've got to roll him out again, do you? Okay. You've got Gordon at halfback. Who's really? probably been he arguably be, the most make, form player in Australian make one rugby. He would one of our first pick super, super rugby sides, would he? And neither would Foley. Mate, yeah, then nine start in the all-black team, mate. Oh, please. What do you expect tonight from the All Blacks? Do you expect the first test against Argentina, the second test, the first test against South Africa, or the second test? Okay, I'm not a coward wise after the fact, and I'm open for criticism tomorrow, but I think this Wallabies team will go close to beating us tonight. I don't think we'll front up again. I think we'll go missing. I think Australia have got the benefit of having watched Ireland beat us last year, France beat us last year, Ireland beat us this year, Argentina, South Africa. 
They know the blueprint for beating us. Well, what is we that? still haven't proved. Well, Give just, me the blueprint. Just, just outmuscle us early. Just get up, be more physical. Just dominate the breakdown. Just bro- dominate the cleanouts. Just get up flat in defence. See how good Rico Awani is when he's not given any room. That's the thing. See, that's I think what that's the key got there. To do. I think that's you've the key right there. You've got to get up flat. You've got to shut these guys down. Don't give them space. And they, and they do not have. They do not have the mentality, or maybe for the fact that they are so over-resourced, they don't actually know how to think for themselves anymore. It'll require them going into half time to be told what to do. And again, if you if you want to control this thing, all you do start to put a little bit of pressure on our on our first five, on Richie Mawanga, and suddenly we're nowhere, mate. And, and look, I think even Aaron Smith, I think his time's up. I think he's slow to the breakdown now. I think the only thing that's keeping him in this team at the moment. Is his past, so and not, that's it. So you're not convinced at all. Even if we front up tonight against Australia and we play really well and we blow them off the park, that doesn't convince you about anything. That doesn't convince no, you that this team might what be on the road. What convinces me is we go to the end of the UK, we beat Wales, we beat Scotland, we beat England in three consecutive weeks oh, and three free. consecutive love, tests, love, and that is the pass you mark, Martin. You're, what, Cameron, so you're, mate. you're saying that's not going to happen, Martin. On, you, no, it's not going to happen. You're okay, living on planet so, Cameron George, mate, is where oh, you're living. No, mate. I mean, you're living on planet David God, White mate. is where you're living. We, Both uh, of those guys. Oh, you've clearly had dinner with Ian Foster. Are you in the pocket, Martin? I thought you had some sort of um, level of neutrality. You know this job, mate. You can't do it well if you're too close to anyone. I, how how, how I, is Uncle Ian? I, how is Uncle Ian? I will support Ian Foster to the end because if for no other reason than every single millennium pretty boy and pretty girl that works in the sports media these days has just jumped the train that says they want to sack him and don't have a decent argument for it. It's always been the way. What do you mean a decent argument they for They don't have it, a decent Martin. argument, Look mate. at it. It's they winning record, argument. Martin. Look, I look at the players that he's oh, got, mate. He t- picks those players, that's Martin. That's all he's got, mate. But He's him, only got them. him and Ian Foster, uh, sorry, him and Steve Hansen and go. Steve Chu we were part Are you still of the decade those guys? Mate, that has destroyed I'll rugby, tell you what, next you're which be means Jesus that... and the Twelve Apostles, mate. Get with the program. It's now 2022. It's September, is what it is. We're oh. playing a Bledisloe oh, Cup test, mate. mate. The... You can't keep tracking back ten years in your own miserable life and keep dragging up things that have happened and things and mistakes that you've made. You've got to move forward, Bono. You need a doctor, Martin. Three deep breaths. Now, come on, let's do it together, mate. We've both okay, been no, here. Close your eyes, okay? Breathe. Tight in. Tight out. Tight out. Tight in. Aeroplanes taking off. That's it. Now, Aeroplanes landing. Work on Aeroplanes your breathing, Martin. Work, work on your breathing. Let us work move to on the your black breathing. caps then, people, because this is... Hey, sorry, so who's going to win tonight? Well, the All Blacks are going to win. I always say the All Blacks are going to win. I don't okay. think it'll be easy, but I think they will get out by about 10 to 15 in the end, because I, I don't think that the Wallabies have enough weapons to hurt Okay, and if we lose... I will, I will publicly say that I'm, no, I, I, I no, might have been mistaken no, and no, you might have been right no, no. on this one instance. But see, you don't have to, Martin, because this, this is what annoys me in the media. This thing about, oh, you told me that they'd lose. You don't know what you're talking about. No, no, I'm not a coward wise after the fact. I'm prepared to make a statement, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Oh, but wrong. I'm not going to be one of these well, people that's going to form an Just opinion afterwards. Just say you're wrong now. Say, I was wrong today when I said what I said. No. Say it now. You might and as if well we be... lose, is Ian Foster still your boy? Yes. Because he's not, because everyone hates him and I, I want to be on his side for no reason other than just to be contrary, if nothing else. Apologise to me! Let us turn our attention to the Black Caps and hopefully you will level the oh. same kind of criticism at this side. I can't believe the free ride that these guys have got. You know, they, they blow three tests in England. We're the World Test Champions. They go over there and they blow them. And this is absolutely down to selections from Kane Williamson and Gary Stead. And not using Ajaz Patel. Getting rolled in three consecutive tests against a team that had won 1-17 in 17 up to that point, right? Then we come over and play the Chapel Hadley. And these, these players front the media and they talk about how it means so much to the Chapel Hadley and it evokes history and all of this kind of stuff. And we get rolled, bold and wristled in that. We get embarrassed by Australia again. We're like little boys going over there to play them, scaredy, fraidy cat little boys. And then what do we get from Kane and Gary afterwards? Oh, well, you know, we've got plenty to work on. We've got lots of learnings. And Kane, and Gary Stead appears on News Hub in a, in, a, in a lovely little soft piece about how Kane might score some runs in the next game. When are the critics going to actually sharpen the knives and turn towards the Black Caps and go, OK, Kane Williamson, you're obviously checked out, mate. You look like a guy that's actually resigned already from work. And whether you have or haven't, it's time to give up the white ball captaincy because the decision-making is clear. You aren't there. 
You you can't. You are picking favourites. You how the hell is Mitchell Santner still in that what, team what, what? when all he does? I mean, he doesn't even turn it like Vittori turned it. Vittori didn't turn it the last ten years of his career. You tell me how Gary Stead retains his place without a single what? There's no review. There's 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 no one from New Zealand cricket is prepared to say those results are unacceptable for this team. We're the number one team in the world supposedly in ODIs, and we get embarrassed in Australia, and it's just all swept under the carpet. No, uh, swept Martin, under the carpet. You are preaching to the converted. I cannot believe that Gary Stead's still in his job. I cannot believe that we still sort of want to romanticise Kane Williamson. The problem in this country is, for so long we've been so bad at cricket, and I just put it down to, I just put it down to a lack of application. You, you used to hear me on radio players, sport. You know, the, no, but it. for a long time, oh God, we don't have the players. We crap. don't, it's only played in a certain hey, amount you, of schools. Come on. Can we just... Get it's rid of we don't have the player thing. Rubbish. It's about passion and desire. It's got nothing else to do with it. Guys who showed that, like the Crows, like the Turners, like the Hadleys, became the very best in the world. The talent's here. It's about application. But we've never had an expectation on this cricket team no. like we've had on the All Blacks. And so nobody expects anything. So when they do do well, it's so, oh, look at the Black Caps. It's like, so you guys have your achievements put up at the highest level, basically because of your history of failings. So you've got light and shade. Brilliant. Where the All Blacks, it's not just about winning. They've got to win well to actually get the plaudits. And And that is the difference. And that is part of what you call a legacy. And that is the expectation. But Kane Williamson, really his captaincy and ability is woeful. It's poor, guy, They are so conservative in the approach. There is nothing attacking about them. Look at what McCullum's done for England. Look at what he's doing in terms of bringing interest back to test cricket. And then you do, and we've said this before, Williamson, we also haven't forgotten we lost a test to Bangladesh. Yes. We drew a series against an average South African team. Williamson wasn't available, miraculously came right for the IPL. You know, then turns up to England. The difference between England and New Zealand really probably came down to the form of marquee batsman. Joe Root performed, Williamson didn't. Then you go back to what Ross Taylor said in his book where he pointed out to a little bit of racism that might exist within New Zealand cricket. Well, have a look at this. Have a look at the three players who have been screwed the most in this New Zealand team. Ravindra, Ish Sodhi, and Patel, Ajaz Patel. Well, we got All happen to be of Indian ethnicity. Well, I, yeah, Mitchell Sant- no, 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 no. I'm going based on, I think you're allowed to draw some questions here, and I'm only basing it on what... Ross Taylor implied in his book as well. But then you go and have a look at Mitchell Santner. So how does Santner make this side? Ravindra Sodi and Patel cannot, mate. And that is part of the problem here. Have a look at this game. It is so damn elitist still. Play for the right club. Go to the right school. Have the right colour skin and we will pick you. What is New Zealand cricket doing in South Auckland to try and find a Joel Garner, to try and find a Malcolm Marshall? We've seen what track and field have done when they found a Valerie Adams and they're starting to you, tap into that absolute wonderful athleticism that Pacific Island community do. Or what does New Zealand cricket say? Oh, they don't play cricket. They go to church on Sunday. They're only interested in gladiatorial games. Do we have any sort of high performance centre based, arguably, amongst the greatest talent pool in the world? Of course we don't. You, you, you think about it. You know there's a Joel Garner sitting out there it has equivalent. To be, mate. You know be. there is. I know there you has know to there's be, a Malcolm Marshall. I went through Mount Abbott's grammar school in the eighties with a large Polynesian community. I saw kids pick up a cricket ball who had never played before, who was scary with a ball in hand. So I think there's a couple of major issues here with New Zealand cricket. But look, it starts at the top as yeah, well. Yeah, it's the, all okay. just become one of the, one we've of the got things, no expectation, uh, so why shouldn't we but have also any one of the things with New Zealand cricket is New Zealand cricket got fat, lazy, and bloated from the time that they signed the big TV deal and they've got the money in the bank. From that from that particular point on, I remember the, the CEO saying to me once when I was walking up the road when I lived in Grafton, he, used to go, he goes to breakfast every morning with um, who's the head of the um, Cricket Players Association? Uh, Heath Mills. He goes to breakfast with him every morning. And anyway, and he said to me, and, uh, and I was asking about this, about you know this and that, New Zealand cricket, we're fighting at this. And he said to me, yeah, but look at our bank balance. That, uh, that was a direct but, quote. And I said to him at the time, I said, really? I said, that's it? I said, test yeah, cricket's dying. But, you've got nobody playing the yeah. game. Nobody's watching the game. And all you care about is whether or not you've got a fat bank balance, mate. Yeah, but this is the problem. You talk about the depth of, you talk about where the playing quality and numbers are in all black rugby at the moment where's the depth and it's that because it's all become top heavy it's all become about a group of players the tail is wagging the dog their players associate isn't it interesting when you have a look at Rob Nickel and Heath Mills how long have those guys been in their job 15 20 years why because they love the power how many people stay in jobs for that long well, in mate, one these career these good. days they, do, they, they don't they're doing their work for the players if, you know, if I was one of those players I'd be delighted with those guys and what they're doing because they're representing me in the way that I want to represent it I'm getting a hell of a lot of money and I'm secure in my position and a lot of these 
these guys have never ever felt that before. But look, let's just go back to the to the to the to the root cause here. And this is a team which is almost impossible to get out of. You had a guy last year, Ajaz Patel, who bowled ten wickets in an Third innings time in, history. in India. He got fourteen in that Test match. He comes back to New Zealand, they won't play him against Bangladesh. Bangladesh had a spinner that spun us out in the last couple of days of a test match. Okay, now of course, you know, he wants to play all three forms of the game. He won't get picked for the ODIs. He goes, you know, they take him over to England for that test series over there. Kane uses him once and then doesn't pick him for the other two games. I mean, look, you know, these are serious questions but, that need to be levelled at the captain and the coach. And you aren't allowed near these guys to actually ask those questions. Every time you try, it is contrived. It's in a press conference format or it's in a Zoom format. You're surrounded by a whole lot of other journos who are sitting there going, but Kane, what about your, but, your sailor hat and, and, and steering the ship for us? This is what you get. Mark, I sit in these oh, press please conferences, Please do not mate, bring up that. Please I, do I not get, bring up I that awful press alternative commentary mate, that is not no, even look, funny. I, I sit there in these press conferences, and I'm, I'm not joking, these, uh, these millennial journalists call the players by their nicknames. They, th- that is what you are getting. There is a, a now an absolute relationship between the mass media organisations and these sports. They have cooperative relationships. Yeah, but you call Ian days. Foster Fozzy, don't you? Mate, Fozzie's my doggy, mate. Okay. I'm with Fozzie till the, I'm with Fozzie till the All Blacks lose every single game from here on I, in, and they no, sack him, mate. No, and I'll still stand I, beside him but no, because I still maintain that those players are letting him down. No, but I completely agree with you here. I mean, but it's again, it's the organisations that seem to have the players' association in the background. Oh, they just got the bank balance, mate. Just like seem to have like this Zealand infrastructure. Rugby. They are fat rich, mate. And when you're fat rich, you lose your edge. Well, I'll say happens. this: the greatest, the greatest passion any athlete, any team can have is passion and desire and a genuine. And the only way, a lot of teams will talk it up, a lot of individuals will talk it up, but the only way you truly test it is put them in an adverse situation. But of course, these days, our sports sports teams don't have a lot of adversity. You know, there's always someone there. There's some staff member in the background to pick them up when they fall over. Because that person's trying to justify their job as well. Are, yeah. And you saw this in the Chapel Hadley. I mean, there we are facing facing adversity. And what was our reaction to it? It was to collapse in the face of it, wasn't it? There was no grit. There was no desire. There's no determination. My thing is, I'd put Daryl Mitchell captain of those white ball sides. There's a guy to me that actually looks as though it means yeah. something to him. And I don't care whether he's a captain or not a captain's butt. I don't give it. I just want somebody out there who actually plays like they mean it. Apologise to me! Third topic then. Sport New Zealand, high performance sport New Zealand, and what is their actual role in New Zealand sport? Now, this week the story broke, of course. Um, you know, it was meant to be a $9 million punishment that they levelled at New Zealand rugby for not having gender equity on their board, not having 40% women board members on their board. That ended up being $280,000 of funding withheld, which could increase to six hundred dollars by next year if they don't have a 40%. Uh, women representation on their board. Uh, Sport New Zealand maintained that this is not a punishment, but when you ask them about it, all you get is the management speak and the and the, and the cliches. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I under I understand all the inequality, and I understand that there has to be kind of reverse discrimination in some of these things. But ultimately, what it comes <laughs> down to is you're you're in charge of. $500 million of New Zealand sports funding. Surely your number one job is to allocate that funding. It is not to decide... For, for performance reasons. Yeah, your, your job in Sport New Zealand is not to be there as an, another arm of the political wing of the government trying to societally change us and... Morally and, police and, us. That's it, and morally police us. You know, you look at that New Zealand rugby board, for example. Okay, they don't have enough women on there. But, you know, the kaleidoscope nature of that board where they're trying to get as many different people from as many different backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, and all kinds of different... Um, I suppose, uh, where they've come from in their lives and so forth. And they sit there and make the most ballsed up decisions that they possibly can. There is a distinct lack of acumen, nous and, and rugby knowledge on that board. And yet, for, for as far as Sport New Zealand goes, what the biggest thing is whether you have four women or five yeah. women on their but, board. I mean, you listen to what I'm saying here, people. This is insanity is what it is. It's actually nutso is what it is. Yeah. Just to think that because you don't have a penis, you should be on this. What, what With New Zealand rugby at the moment, they can't attract any women. There are no women want to go on this no, board. No. So what do you do? You're just going to walk down the street and find somebody and say, you don't have a penis, therefore you should be on the board of New Zealand rugby. That's how silly it actually is. I understand having to get some kind of gender equity if that's what we want Mm. as a world. I do understand that. But you've also got to, at the same time, maintain a level of excellence. You can't just blanket and go, hey, this has to happen by this date. Because if there aren't the people available, there aren't the people available. 
No, no, look, Martin, look, uh, and there's a number of other issues. I mean, I look at Sky Television as well, where, you know, Sky Television seem more interested in getting a headline around having a female rugby league commentator for the first time or sending five women off as journalists for the Olympics or Commonwealth Games. It doesn't matter whether they're the best. Meanwhile, you know, their share price is sort of at 24 cents, and there's a lot of people out there that bought their shares at $1, $2, $3. They actually just want to see a return, not really interested in the headline. Look, there are some areas of society where you're always looking for equity, like the health system. You want to make sure that the health system is set up so that everybody feels system, so everybody that. feels comfortable yes. going in. And at times, you do need to make sure that you are culturally sensitive because some things aren't as quite as black and white, particularly amongst the Pacifica community, where it's a much more extended family in terms of decision making, and it's and you have to understand all of that so that you've got that. But any time I hear about equity in the workplace on these boards, what you're saying is that you want equal outcome, and that is dangerous. You want equal opportunity, absolutely. But when you start preaching equal outcome, have a look throughout history, mate. Russia tried it. How did that work out? How did that work out back in the day? How did it work out under Mao in China when we wanted equity, we wanted equal outcome? Nazi Germany tried it. How did that work out? Now, that Ooh, might I sound mean, a little bit extreme. Well, it is extreme. No, but it's not extreme. It's bloody extreme. No, because the you're talking I, about the fascist no, dictatorships no, is what but, you're talking but, about. But the ideology is exactly the same. The ideology is exactly the same. And then where does it stop? So suddenly we've got to say 40% women. Then we're going to have 50% women. Well, how many of those women are allowed to then be European? How many have got to be Chinese? How many have got to be Samoan? Well, and, and, and then you keep breaking it down, breaking it down. I don't care with a 90% of the New Zealand rugby board are women. As long either. as they're the ones that are qualified and can bring areas of expertise financially from a playing point of view from a club point of view and basically represent all the different stakeholders that make up sport tell me how the board of bike nz worked under its rationale of 40 percent women now i'm not saying the women are to blame for what's gone on there you just want the best people culpable as much as anyone else no but this is what you've talked about and so you go and say who wants to be on the board of new zealand rugby now you get 200 guys who will put their hand up you might get 10 women okay you've got 10 spots of the 200 men, there are 20 that absolutely world class that could fill any one of those roles because of the sheer number of people that are put up. Amongst the women, you might have one. But hang on a minute, we've got a, a got point to find four. four. That's it. And so what do you actually do? You bring your organisation into major disrepute. And this is what the problem is. You're 100% right. This is the government ideology that's been driven out of the universities by the far left. This, this identity politics and somehow that the only relationship that's ever between men and women has been one of dominance from men. It's just been us absolutely just running women into the ground, which is the biggest load of crap if you actually go throughout history. History hasn't been kind to anyone, mate. It has not been kind to anyone. That's the harsh reality of it all. And, and, and I'm, I, I just get so frustrated but by this path that we're going down, what you're basically saying is you don't trust any men in today's society for actually representing and being able to look after women no. because we're all chauvinists and we're all pigs, all pigs mate. and we're and, and the only thing we're interested in is men. That's what it. an absolute load of rubbish! And to just cast that right across all of man, right across society, is exactly what well, is wrong dumb. today, it's mate. It's dumb. It's stupid. dumb. It's not. I mean, and it just doesn't stand up to scrutiny. That's the other thing about it. And this is this is what this is what frustrates me about the sport New Zealand ruling. I mean, they're sitting there, and you know, this is how ridiculous it is, people. They're sitting there patting themselves on the back, going, "Oh well, we told those rugby, didn't we? I mean, there's four women on the board, or else you don't get the money." New Zealand rugby have turned around through Stuart Mitchell, the chairman, and said. Okay, well, even though this money is allocated towards community and that, um, well, it won't actually affect any of our <laughs> programs, see, which is him saying, we don't actually need that money. So New Zealand Rugby saying, we don't need it anyway. Sport New Zealand are patting themselves on the back. And I'm sitting here going, there's $280,000 that the all-whites could use to actually organise games. That There were there were cyclists who, who, who couldn't go to the World Road Champs because they didn't have any money. And yet, we can't allocate that money. You don't understand, Martin. It's not as simple as that. It is that bloody but, simple, Mark. But, but, and if you can't make it that simple, yep. get the hell out of here no. and go and work in another government department. Mate, I saw Triathlon New Zealand. The governance in that sport in recent times has been nothing but appalling around selection, the way they've dealt with it, the way they've hid. They're playing this sort of whole PC game at the same time, mate. You know, look, let's take example for the R Women's Rugby World Cup that is coming up, right? Hey, suddenly we've got to have females calling it as the lead commentators well, and the a, expert they commentators. The problem the is, and, and you know, we've got to make God sure that 80% or 90% of the team presenting are women, right? And I've got no problem with that as long as they're the best. If I'm wanting to build the audience of women's rugby, I go and get Nisbet. 
I go and get see, Tony is, Johnson. See, is, I get the best this commentators is, this is, no, this is the to bring question. credibility to it yeah. and to sell this it. Is, now, we've got question. a couple of good female commentators starting to come through. But as a whole, let's be honest, a lot can. of them are cringeworthy. Yeah, well, they they're are, cringeworthy. They are cringeworthy. You switch but off. That's and no so you're trying to build mate. a product, so you want to play politics rather than actually just doing... And, go woke, go broke, Mark. And, some, and it, is, it is as stupid as... Uh, you know, you're sitting there, and as women, and I would want, I'd love to know honestly what the women who play think, and what women who are fans of this game think as well. Do are you obsessed with the fact that all you want is females on the screen presenting to you and commentating? Are you? Is, is that what women? Oh, is that what women really want? Oh, I, because half the audience, remember, is men. So I'm with you. I just want the best ones. And if they aren't trained up at the moment and they don't have the experience... Yeah, let them build. Organically, let, them... let it grow. But do not Strike try and manufacture else, it. Do no, not try no. and manufacture it. It's all about manufacturing it, mate. Absolutely. It's, Speaking it's of manufactured, mate, have you heard about the family that grew up in Taranaki that played rugby in the oh, backyard, the Barretts? Can we talk about the Barretts? Can we talk about the Barretts? Both of those are going to win the Barretts tonight. Oh, oh, the Barretts. Oh, oh, come on, Martin. Oh, oh, and tomorrow I'm getting you back on the show and you're going to say, Martin, you were right. Devlin. I just passed to COVID. <laughs> I met me missus. The Platform.